If you're in Japan, you say Ohio, but if you're a Cherokee, Native American, you say Osayo, O-S-I-Y-O. We learned that this week. See, even if my Bible study is not that good, at least you're learning other languages. No, the Word of God is good. We're going to learn some good things today. Um, we're reading about David and Goliath, and it seems like every sentence or paragraph has a little nugget, at least to me, that will help us. By the way, go to our Brooklyn Tabernacle YouTube page. Seek it out. Sign up. Sign up and hit the bell. That bell will let you know about a lot of other things that hopefully will help you. And do me one other favor. Tell some friends of yours about the Daily Devotional if you think it will help them. Or that they tune in to services on Sunday and Tuesday night prayer meeting if you think it will help them. A lot of people now are lazy or backslidden or don't know the Lord. They're not going to go to church and they make up the excuse, no, I'm not ready to virus. No, I mean the 1894 virus, the flu that was in uh, Portugal and Spain. No, that, you know, people are going nuts with that. But you have to respect them and um, maybe watching will help them. You represent me, please. So David is out there ready to fight Goliath in his own way, not wearing the armor of Saul. You can't imitate other people. Meanwhile, verse 41, chapter 17, 1 Samuel, Meanwhile, the Philistine, with his shield-bearer in front of him, kept coming closer to David. The shield-bearer was bigger than David. And the shield was bigger than David. This was one big dude, Goliath. So now they're moving closer. He looked, he, Goliath, looked David over and saw that he was little more than a boy, glowing with health and handsome. And he despised him. He said to David, am I a dog that you come out to me with a stick? He's speaking about the staff. He thought it was a stick, like pickup sticks. You ever play pickup sticks? Who doesn't move the last stick? He thought that it was a game. He thinks this is a boy. What are you in, kitty church? What, what are they sending out here? Send a real guy out here to fight with me. Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said, and I'll give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. And whereas I'm going to kill you, I'm going to beat you down, then I'm going to leave your body out here in the open and let the birds take care of you and the wild animals eat your carcass, you little squirt, you little runt. So why would God put that in the Bible? Why didn't you say, and David and Saul, and David and Goliath got it on, and David won, and all that? No. They tell us what Goliath said. All scripture is inspired by God. There's a reason why he's telling us this. Why? Because Satan is the master intimidator. To use modern parlance, he talks smack to our ears and our mind. You're not going to make it. You'll be a fool. Don't be a fool. Stop with this trusting God stuff. These circumstances God can't get you out of. That son is not coming back to God. Why do you even bother praying? The girl is gone. Don't you get it? The girl is gone. Your daughter is bye-bye. Just now move on to the next chapter of your life. It is not going to happen. Now, you know, I think God put it in my heart to go on a missions trip. Or what are you going to say when you get there? You know the demonic powers that are over there in that country? You're going to be made a fool of. No, but the Bible says, I'll open my mouth and God will give me words. Stop that. You'll have nothing to say. You'll just go, I, 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 like that. Master intimidator. Listen, I... I know that from the scripture. I know that from my own experience. I know that from pastors and Christians telling me this is one of the devices of the enemy to not let us stand up and fight. He says it's no use to fight. 
don't even put on faith and love and, and the weapons of our warfare, spiritually speaking, not physical ones like David turned down. It's no use. You're too old. There's another one. No, you're too old. You're 58 years old. How is God going to use you? Just go to church on Sunday and relax, will you? No, you're too young. You're 23 years old. You don't have the experience. Have you been to seminary? No, look, listen. Have you been to seminary? Do you know the Bible? How many verses have you memorized? What's the mark of the beast in Book of Revelation? You don't know. I'm not being, uh, by the way, I'm not trying to be comical. When I first went in the ministry, I dealt with intimidation. That was Satan's main occupation with me. Just intimidate, intimidate. And I was listening and I didn't know what to do. Did you know, real quick, I wasn't in the ministry four months. My sermons were so bad, people were cutting up their membership cards while I was preaching. That's not a good sign. I, made, I did a sermon. There were 15, 18 people in the, in, the, in the building on Sunday night in the Brooklyn Tabernacle. And quickly, uh, I called people to the altar. And two came. One lady was praying. And then there was a guy, big guy, who used to come, but he was sideways in his mind. But I inherited a lot of that uh, from the church as it previously was made up. And the guy was at the altar on the steps like this, just down like this. And I looked at him and I thought, maybe I shouldn't bother him. Let's see, what should I do? Sometimes God is dealing with people. Don't bother them. Let them pray and work it out. Don't interfere with the Holy Spirit. And he just stayed like this, leaning over to the left with his hands like this. So then I thought, no, maybe I should talk to him. And the organ's playing and people are leaving the building. And I thought, you mean something I said actually spoke to someone? I actually affected someone through the word of God that they're up there at the altar praying like that. This is true as I'm talking to you. Finally, I came behind him. Everyone else basically cleared out. He had been there a long time and I thought, I don't believe this. See, Satan? And I tapped him on this shoulder and he looked up and he wasn't praying, he had a piece of paper, and he was drawing stick figures with different hands out, some were joined together. He had about 20 of them on this white paper, and he held it up. He said, do you like these? He wasn't praying. I inspired him to draw stick figures on a piece of paper. And driving home that night, all I could think was, I gotta get another job. I can't do this. Hey, listen. When men draw stick figures, grown men are drawing stick figures with their hands all like that. This is not a good sign of a ministry, blessed by God. That's what happens. The enemy tries to intimidate us and cause us to back down. But God has not given us a spirit of fear. Don't be afraid today. Step out, be yourself, trust in God, and don't let voices intimidate you. He's a liar. When his lips are moving, he's lying because he is a liar from the beginning. But Jesus Christ is the one we're trusting in and he won't fail us. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Amen.